you guys come? Yeah. <laughs> The acid test was breaking out into an area in which it had no specific goals. It was just discovering what there was out there if you just continued to move away from the norm. And, but and when we got to the end of it, we really had a sense of what the acid test meant to a lot of people. It was a test, and there were people that passed and there were people that didn't pass. When we did the show up in Portland, to give you an example of somebody who passed. Some businessman just walking around the street came in. We charged a buck. For a buck, you got to see uh, us make all our noise and the dead make all their noise and, and anything else that happened. This guy was in a suit and uh, had an umbrella and he, always, he got the customary cup of uh, stuff. And about midnight, you could see him really get ripped. Somebody you know had probably never been anything but drunk on beer, and but he looked around and saw all these strange people. And he looked down, and there was, the spotlight was showing down on him. He saw a shadow down there. Then stand up straight, put that umbrella over his shoulder, and he says, "The king walks." <laughs> and begins, he says, "The king turns around." <laughs> and now the king will dance. They weren't just playing what was on the music sheets, they were playing what was in the air. Um, when the dead are at their best, they're, the vibrations that are stirred up by the audience is the music that they play. And consequently, when we'd go to L.A., you'd get one kind of thing. When you'd go to Portland, Oregon, you'd get a completely other kind of music. And that means that the band has to be supple enough to really uh, read the notes written on the wall and that, and that they're changing all the time. Um, I don't know of any other rock band that could have done it. Usually, when, when it sort of started when we went to see the Beatles. They went up to see the Beatles with us in the, in the bus. And we saw, I saw power like I'd never seen it, I'd never imagined it before. The, um, when one of the Beatles, when George would turn his head like this, you'd hear this screaming wave follow it, follow his head like this. And what the Beatles were saying was, come closer, come closer, uh, love me do. And the people were pressing closer and closer, but they didn't know how to sing that moment. And the moment needed to say, don't come closer, stay back, stay back, stay back. They're looking for magic. Uh, when I did my uh, writing class, I started the writing class by showing the people this. And the reason I like to do that is because there's a moment when you see something like that, there's a crack in your mind. And you know it's a trick, but you can't figure it out. And that crack lets in all the light. Uh, it opens up all the possibilities. When that little split second thing happens, when the dead are playing, and everybody in the audience goes, wow, did you see that? That is the, that's the moment, and kids will watch five hours of mediocre music to have that one click happen because that is puts them in touch with the invisible. There was a time when we avoided fame because fame was almost the kiss of death. Uh, fame meant Tom Jones and John Denver. But uh, cream rises and people can recognize it and as the dead, the longer they've played, they haven't needed anybody to hype them. In fact, if anything, they've gone the reverse to uh, uh, let people think, oh, there's nothing happening here because everybody knew from the very beginning that this was right and it was going to continue uh, just the same way that uh, those flowers bloom, that it's genetically uh, purposeful.
it knows what it's doing and it will grow to its proper height and uh, it will bear a flower. And all we have to do is keep people from tramping around in the flower garden. Okay. When you hear ripple, uh, you know it's dealing with something beyond the veil. It doesn't say so, but the thing where there is no pebble tossed and the ripples in the water, everybody gets this chill up and by that. It's just the same thing as you when you read uh, Shakespeare or Sappho or, uh, or the Bible, that, that the poetry is there. Um, these guys have known it a long time and they have just been the custodians of it. And uh, it's, it's a great honor and a lot of fun to be ringside with stuff like this. It really is. You will, uh, I think that in, in 20 years, whoever is still alive will, will still be working at what they're doing. They, they, there's no place else to go. It's like me, you know, I buried my kid right out there on the place. I can't get off this land. You know, they would take, it would take tanks to move me off this land. It, it, uh, the dead aren't going to get up off that. Um, they're going to defend it to the end of their life. Uh, they're warriors.